out, everyone. Uh, another thing I want to ask everybody is try not to leave this, um, the stands here and move too much, um, just so you're not distracting to other students. Um, yeah, that would be helpful for today's session. So try and find a seat, um, a spot that you like at the beginning, uh, and then try not to move too much from there, just so students are distracted behind you. Um, yeah. And um, yeah, you're going to see some pretty cool stuff on stage. Um, there's a barrier up here, an invisible barrier, so you can't cross. Uh, so just, yeah, stay in the stands for now, just so we don't have any distractions or um, any people just running across the stage. Welcome, live stream people. Uh, can you give me some emojis if you're hearing my audio? Drop some emojis in the live chat. That would be helpful. And I see all space people. Yep. Good to see you guys. Um, we're going to start. Let's see what time it is. We're planning on starting in about another minute. Uh, so, again, we're just going to give everyone some time to jump in. Awesome. Okay, sweet. Live stream people look like they're hearing me good. That's good to hear. Great. On space people look good too. Nice. All right, we'll give it one more minute. Again, just try and find a seat uh, before we get started and not don't move too much after that. All right. Okay, live stream people look good. Awesome. Great to hear from you guys, live stream people. Uh, let's see. All right. So I think with that, we're going to go ahead and get started. Last audio check, if you're in Altspace, give me some emojis. And then if you're on live stream, give me some emojis in the chat. Last audio check before we get started. All right, it looks like Altspace people are hearing me fine. Live stream people, drop some emojis. Looks like you guys are hearing me good as well. All right, awesome. Okay, so let's get started with today's workshop. So my name is Nicholas Barone. I'm gonna be taking you through today's workshop where we're we'll talking about Unity and how to use the Unity game engine for VR development. So the first part is just gonna be introducing who we are uh, and what we do. Uh, then after that, we're gonna talk about what Unity is, what are the advantages of using a game engine like Unity? How does Unity compare to competing game engines like Unreal? What are some examples of VR apps made with Unity? What's use it, Unity's business model? What's its pricing? And then we're going to do a deep dive into the VR market uh, in terms of its growth and VR headset sales and job opportunities. After that, we're going to do some 3D assessment. We're going to be using our quiz system over here uh, and then having some explanations for the questions using 3D animation. Then we're going to talk about next steps to becoming a VR developer. And at the very end, we're going to break out into a VR world where you can come up and ask us questions one-on-one uh, -on -one to the instructors. Uh, so this session today is being fully recorded, and it's also being live streamed to YouTube. So live stream people, nice to see you guys. For the live stream people, if you have questions at any point today, just drop them in the chat. I or Tony, who's our other instructor, is monitoring that chat and can answer any questions help any comment for you guys to make there. For the alt space people, uh, we're going to be having scheduled Q&A times where you'll be able to raise your hand and ask questions to us. Uh, you're going to be doing that through the raise hand button in the bottom right. So you press the raise hand button. We'll be able to call on you and then megaphone you uh, so you can ask questions as well. All right, so that's how that's going to work. Um, and what, OK, so yeah, some people already raising their hands. Um, so with that said, this session is being live streamed and we're going to be distributing the recording of today to everybody. Um, but in order to do that, we have to have a way of contacting you. So if you want the recording from today, in case you missed anything or want to review anything, go ahead and press the sign up here button at the top of the Alt Space world. If you're on the live stream, Tony's going to drop the link in the live chat. So you can go ahead and sign up there. And when you also sign up, we're going to be randomly selecting one person from that email list 
to get the Introduction to Unity and C Sharp programming course that we teach completely free. So we're going to be raffling off our uh, intro to Unity and C Sharp programming taught live in virtual reality at the end of today's session to one person who signs up there. All right, so if you want to be entered into that raffle, press the sign up here button if you're in all space and go ahead and enter your first name and email. And if you're on the live stream, press that link in the video description. And it's also going to be dropped in the live chat as well. So you have to stay till the end of today's session in order to be eligible to receive the raffle prize. So we're going to be checking at the end to be announcing the winner. You have to be present in order to claim your prize. So make sure you stay till the end of today's session. Um, and regardless of whether you win or lose a raffle, everyone's going to be invited into our Google Classroom for the Introduction to Unity and C Sharp Programming class, where you'll be able to find uh, our assignments, our learning material for the course, our first class, which is actually this Saturday, the meetup link, so you can attend that for free, uh, and also our course syllabus and a bunch of other resources for VR development. So uh, make sure that you do that right now. Press the sign up here button, uh, and then you'll be entered into the raffle, get the recording from today, and also entrance into the Google Classroom. So I'll give everyone a second to do that, um, and also the live stream people. All right. All right, cool. With everybody doing that, I want to go on to a little bit of an icebreaker. Uh, what is the date for the second course? I'm seeing some questions live stream. Um, okay, sweet. Live stream people, uh, yeah, I'll get to the live stream questions in a bit. Um, so I want to do a quick icebreaker before we jump into kind of the hollow portation lesson. Uh, so I'm going to bring up a 3D globe here. Um, and it's going to ask for where you're located. Again, it's only to project it on the 3D globe. We're not using the data or anything else other than this cool little experiment. So go ahead and click yes or no, um, and we'll be able to see it on the globe here. And the live stream people, if you could drop where you're tuning in from in the live chat as well, that would be uh, helpful. One of the cool things about teaching and learning in virtual reality is that you can tune in and still feel that sense of presence and be in a 3D environment, even though you're at the comfort of your own home. Uh, so it's always cool to see where everyone's tuning in from. So let's take a look at the all space people quick and then we'll go to live stream. Some people from Orlando, a lot of people from the Northeast, looks like New York City, Chicago. Uh, looks like people in Texas, maybe Austin, uh, someone from Vancouver, uh, in San Jose, in California. Awesome, very cool. And we have someone tuning in from Australia, very nice. Uh, and another person from, uh, looks like France, uh, northern France. Awesome. Let's see where the live stream people are tuning in from. Uh, some people from Portland, San Francisco, California, Virginia, Omaha, Texas, California, New Jersey, Rock Hill, Philippines. Very cool. Okay, awesome. That's just a cool little icebreaker. I'm going to go and take that off for now. All right, awesome to see where you guys are coming from. Okay, sweet. All right, so with that said, uh, we're going to move on to our hollow portation lesson. Again, last time, make sure you sign up here uh, during today's session in order to be eligible for the raffle, Google Classroom recording, et cetera. Um, but with that said, we're going to move on to the hollow portation lesson. So what's basically going to happen here is a um, a real life uh, projection of myself in this 3D environment is going to come up on the top left here. So it's going to look like a real person uh, in a 3D trans transposed in this 3D environment. And then we're going to have 3D animations that are going to help visualize and demonstrate the concepts that I'm going to be going through. All right. So the all space people, uh, you should notice that it takes about three to five seconds. You'll have a freeze frame, and that's basically loading in all the assets for the presentation. So when that freeze frame does happen, don't exit out of L space. Don't exit out of the um, event. Uh, just let it load for three to five seconds, and then you'll be able to see uh, the hollow portation lesson. All right. So don't exit out of anything. If you just came in, maybe you came a little bit late. It could take up to maybe 30, 40 seconds for it to load in completely, um, but it should load uh, hopefully automatically for most people. All right. So if you came in a little bit late, it should take a little bit to load, maybe 20, 30 seconds. But if you've been here for a bit, like maybe three, five minutes, just wait for that freeze frame to hit three to five seconds, and then it'll load for you. Live stream people, it should load automatically, so you don't have to worry. All right, but is everyone ready to go? Can I get some emojis? Everybody's clear on that? Emojis, guys, is everyone clear on what's gonna happen? Don't exit out of anything. Let it load for a little bit. All right. And if you have any troubles and you're on alt space, uh, my uh, PC avatar over here, this guy, uh, is gonna send you guys friend requests, so that way I'll be able to message you. Uh, live stream people, if you have any questions, just drop them in the live chat again. We're monitoring that throughout. 
All right, so expect a friend request from my guy here. Um, and that way we'll be able to message each other. And with that, I think we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, give me emojis when it starts playing for you. And let's go ahead and jump in. Welcome everyone to our VR development with Unity workshop taking place here in virtual reality. I'm your host, Nicholas Barone, and I'm going to be walking you through and teaching you guys today about Unity and how to use it for virtual reality development. First, can we get some emojis to make sure that you guys are able to hear and see me okay? So if you're here in alt space, just go ahead and throw up some emojis so I make sure you're good. If you're watching through our live stream, if you could drop a comment just so I know that you guys are able to hear and see, see me okay so we can proceed. Now, on the similar note, this session is being live streamed and fully recorded, and we'll be distributing the recording through an email after today's event. So make sure we have your email address. If you already signed up for the event with your email, you'll be sure to get the recording afterwards. That way you can review anything that you missed or go over anything if you'd like at a later time. For those people that are here in Altspace VR, the way we're going to do Q&A for today is having you guys press the raise your hand button in the bottom right. And that way we'll be able to call on you and have you ask any questions or make any comments during today's session. For those people that are watching through the live stream, our instructor Jeffrey is on the live stream monitoring for any questions or comments you guys have. So at any point today, if you have a question and you're on the live stream, just drop a comment and Jeffrey will get to you immediately. Thank you guys so much for coming to our workshop and experiencing the future of online learning in virtual reality. So now to go through our agenda, the first five minutes is going to be an introduction talking about who we are and what we do as an organization. The next 25 minutes will be going over VR development with Unity. So we'll be talking about what Unity is, what are the advantages of using a game engine in the first place, what Unity's business model is, how it compares to other competing game engines, and some examples of games and applications that are made with using the Unity engine. After that, we'll do some VR assessment and experiences for the next 15 minutes. Then we'll move on to the summary and next steps if you want to continue your VR journey. And then lastly, we'll portal to a new VR world where you guys can ask questions directly to us as instructors, either here in Altspace or on the live stream. So let me go ahead and introduce myself. My name is Nicholas Barone. I'm the CEO and founder of Universe. I've been teaching in virtual reality for over two years now, and I've instructed over 15 Unity courses in VR. I'm the owner of CS in VR, which is the third largest VR events channel in the world, and I've run over 250 computer science events in virtual reality. I've developed worlds for Altspace VR using Unity and our VR Quiz MRE that has over 7,000 users. I've also managed the development of our VR tutoring app for Universe. Lastly, I have a degree in computer science from the College of Engineering at Cornell University. Jeffrey Miller is our other instructor who is currently monitoring the live stream and answering any questions you guys have. He's currently working as a 3D pipeline engineer at Nike. Before that, he worked at Nissan Automotive as a digital designer and pipeline technical director, and also as a VR slash AR developer and 3D generalist at Pixel Hut. Jeff has over three years of experience working with Unity, four years of experience working with Unreal, and eight years of experience working with 3D modeling. He's produced projects for other companies such as GM, Chevrolet, Holden, Opal, and Kia. Now to talk a bit about us as an organization at Universe, we teach VR development courses in virtual reality. We provide a pipeline of four courses taking you from a complete beginner to building and publishing your own VR app. I started this company because I was frustrated with how online courses work today. There is no live learning experience and instead you get a bunch of pre-recorded videos to watch. And there's also no relationship building, instead they just use discussion forums. That is why on average these online courses have just a 10% completion rate. Our courses which are taught live in VR have six times that completion rate. We bring that in-person learning environment online by teaching in virtual reality, complete with live 3D instruction, demonstrations, assessment, and socializing. We've taught over 9,000 students and have a 4.9 out of 5 star user rating. Currently, we're offering four courses starting with Introduction to Unity and C Sharp Programming. In that course, you learn how to create 3D applications with Unity by learning the Unity Engine, the Unity 3D Programming Library, and also C Sharp Programming. That course expects no previous experience, and the next run of that course starts November 6th. After that course, we have our VR World and Advanced Unity Development course, where you build your first VR worlds like the one you see around you today. You also learn Unity Lighting, Animation using third-party asset stores, Blender Decimation, and how to use Git and GitHub for source control for your Unity projects. The following course after that is VR App Development, where you build and improve your VR app each week with a team of two to three fellow students. 
we teach you the Unity XR Interactions Toolkit, which interactions work both for VR devices and AR devices. The last course is our VR Interactions and Publishing course, where you learn how to program VR continuous movement, grab interactions, make photogrammetry models, and continue to build your VR app with your team. That course culminates with you publishing your VR app to the Oculus App Lab store and welcoming your first users and begin growing. I'll talk more about our courses and what it means to learn in virtual reality at the end. For those that do stay till the end, I will be randomly giving away the introduction to Unity in c -sharp programming course to one student. Now that we've gone over the agenda and introduced ourselves, let's move on to the second part of today, which is covering the Unity engine and how you can use it for VR development. This is a photo of the Unity engine, and Unity's mantra for a long time was democratizing game development. Game development is an incredibly complex and time-consuming process. In order to make a game, you have to program the memory management system, the rendering, animations, and particle effects engine, UI, interactions, and more. Before game engines came along like Unity, you would have to build these systems yourself from the ground up. This would usually only be reserved to people that had a large investment and a large team. But what Unity did was it created one engine that had all those tools, and by giving you access to all the necessary tools for app development in one engine, it makes it a lot faster and more efficient to publish your VR apps and get them to market. That's why I said that Unity democratized game development because it made it much easier and put the tools into everyone's hands to build their own realities with. All right, so let's talk about some of the main advantages of Unity. And one of the big advantages of Unity is their asset store. So Unity has over 40 million assets on its asset store. But you might be wondering, what is an asset? What I mean when I say asset is a really general term that means anything you can use in your app. So it can be the 3D models you use, it can be the sound effects, it could be a programming library, it could be a monetization plugin. It's a very general term, but the reason why you want a large asset store is to give you a better selection and diversity of assets you can use in your game or app. So Unity having over 40 million assets, which is the largest out of any game engine, gives you that large selection and diversity of choice. You're going to be using assets constantly in your project. You're not going to be building everything you have in your app from the ground up. Say you're a programmer, for instance, and you need a model of a tree in your application. You can go to the Unity Asset Store, find a tree asset pack, download it into your project, and use that tree prefab in your app. By using an asset from the Unity Asset Store, you don't need to learn to 3D model the tree yourself and learn a 3D modeling software like Blender, which takes a lot of time and skill to do effectively. As we discussed a little before, when building a game, there's a lot of moving parts and a lot of different skills you need. So being able to take assets from the asset store, incorporate them into your game, and focus on what you're good at, whether that's the programming or 3D modeling, gives you a lot more feasibility in getting your app to market. Now the asset store is a mix of both free and paid assets. So you'll find that some are free like the ones you see here, and you'll also find that some are paid like the ones you see here. The asset store is an open marketplace, so you're going to find assets that are from Unity the company, like the one here, but you're also going to find assets that are actually third-party assets, so those are assets that are made by regular people publishing the 3D models or the programming libraries for you to use. This is great because it gives you the ability to publish and make your own assets and put them on the Unity Asset Store. But it can also be dangerous because those assets aren't as vetted as, say, an asset from Unity. So because of that, you want to make sure you look at the reviews of an asset before purchasing or downloading it to make sure it's right for your project. And you also want to check the specifications to make sure it's compatible with your Unity version. Last thing I want to mention about the Asset Store is that, as I mentioned, you can actually publish your assets onto the Unity Asset Store and charge for them. So say you made a programming library and you think that it could be useful to other people, you can publish it to the Unity Asset Store and charge for it. Now, Unity does take a percentage of the sale you make, but the majority of the profit will go to you. 
So the Unity Asset Store is both a great place to get assets as well as to publish and market your assets. All right, so let's go on to the second major benefit of Unity, which is the phrase build once and deploy everywhere. So traditionally with app development, you would have to build for a singular operating system. So if you're an iOS developer, you're going to build your app specifically for the iOS operating system. And the same goes for Android, Windows, PlayStation. But the beauty about the Unity engine is that you build it once using Unity and Unity handles the deployment across all these different platforms. So you don't have to rebuild your application every single time you want to bring your app to a new platform. And you can imagine that if you didn't have that, it could be very expensive and time consuming to go through. Having to rebuild your app for the iOS operating system, then the Android operating system, then the Windows operating system is going to take a lot of time and money. And especially if you're an independent developer or a small team, you're not going to have those resources and time to put into getting your app across all these different platforms. So that is why Unity is really great for the small teams and independent developers because they're able to build their application once with Unity and deploy it across all those platforms to get the maximum customer outreach. Now, of course, if you're a large studio or a company like Facebook, you're not going to mind bringing your application individually to all these different platforms. You have a ton of money and manpower and rebuilding your application for all these operating systems is not a huge deal. But if you're a small team or independent developer, it's going to be a lot more challenging. All right, so let's talk about something that's specific to the people that are in this room. If you want to build for either of these two platforms, VR Chat or Altspace VR, you need to do it with Unity. If you want to build worlds in Altspace VR or avatars or worlds for VR Chat, you have to do it with Unity as their SDKs and plugins are Unity specific. There is no other equivalent way to bring in worlds and avatars into these apps with any other game engine. Unity is the only one supported to do that. So if you want to build a world like the one you see around you, Unity is the only option. And that's a big reason why we chose Unity is because in the second course, you're going to be building worlds like the one you see around you, and you're going to have to do that in Unity. So that's something important to know. All right, can I get some emojis if you're hearing me clearly? If you're on the live stream, drop a comment there. Let me wait a few seconds just to make sure you're okay. Awesome. So let's talk about Unity's market. Unity's bread and butter market for a long time was the mobile game market. 50% of all mobile games are made using Unity. But with VR and AR becoming more mature markets, Unity has a stronghold on both of them. With 66% of all VR apps being made with Unity and 91% of all augmented reality apps being made with Unity. And as these platforms continue to grow in both popularity and use case, Unity is going to become a more and more important skill to have. The jobs of tomorrow of being a VR or AR developer are going to require the skills of using the Unity engine. So it's a great way to future-proof yourself in terms of getting that skill set. All right, so let's talk about the main competitor to Unity, which is the Unreal Engine, which is a great engine. But they have their advantages and disadvantages to each. I'll talk about why we decided to teach Unity instead of the main competitor, Unreal. Now the first thing to note is that Unity has a larger market share of games in general, with 45% of all games being made with Unity, while 14% of all games are made with Unreal. Now that's important because that means you have a larger community of developers using the Unity game engine than the Unreal game engine. And that's going to be important for when you run into problems or need help troubleshooting. You're going to be more likely to find abundant and healthy discussion forums when you run into a Unity problem than when you run into an Unreal problem. That's just because of the larger communities and more developers working with Unity than Unreal. This is especially important for VR and AR, which are growing markets with growing SDKs. You're going to be constantly needing help from outside sources and looking stuff up on Stack Overflow. So having a large community is really important for AR and VR development, and that's a big advantage for Unity. Now, as I mentioned, Unity also has a larger asset store. So Unity has over 40 million assets on its asset store, while Unreal has 8 million assets. And we talked about why that's important, more selection and more diversity of choice. But let's talk about some of the advantages for Unreal. So Unreal has its advantage in that it's generally regarded to have a better rendering pipeline than Unity. So its games are going to look better and be more aesthetically pleasing. So this makes Unreal especially popular for fields like architecture and engineering where you're doing a lot of rendering work. 
This is because these fields require their apps to look very realistic and high quality. So Unreal is generally regarded to do that better than the Unity engine. Unreal is also regarded to have a better visual programming system with Blueprint. Now visual programming is basically like a node-based version of regular text-based programming. The advantage of that is that it's easier to pick up as a beginner. The disadvantage is that you have less granular control than with regular programming, like C Sharp, which is what Unity uses. But for us, the advantages of the larger community, the larger asset store, the support for alt space and VR chat, and then specifically for us, the SDK for VR development is why we chose Unity. We use the XR Interactions Toolkit SDK for VR development, which is actually by Unity. So that likely means that it's going to be supported for a long time and it's going to be compatible with a lot of different devices. And that's one of the main reasons why we chose Unity. That's not to say Unreal is any less of an engine, but for our use case, Unity is the preferred option. Okay, cool. So let's talk about the Unity business model. And the good news is, is that Unity is basically free to use for everyone in this room. Now the personal plan, which is what I recommend to all beginners or people coming into Unity development, is completely free. The only caveat is if your app starts to make over $100,000 in revenue over the last 12 months, or you get $100,000 in funding over the last 12 months, then you'll have to start paying a fee. But for most of us who aren't at that point yet, it's going to be completely free to use. And there's no difference really in the feature set you get with the personal plan, which is free, versus the paid plan. There's no difference in the rendering engine, there's no difference in the animation tools and the particle system. The basic engine is the same across these plans. Now what you do get with the pro plan is better data analytics for your application. So you can see and monitor things like frame rate across your different users. But again, if you don't have an app that's widely distributed to a user base, it doesn't make sense paying $400 per year in order to get that. Finally, there are the pro and enterprise plans. So one thing to note about Unity is that it is not open source. So what that means is that you can't go into the code, modify it, and then build an app from it. Now Unity does release all the code for its engine on a GitHub repository, but that doesn't allow you to take that code, modify it, and then use that modified version for launching your own application. And that way it is not open source. And that's the benefit of these pro and enterprise plans. If you pay for these pro and enterprise plans, you can actually modify the source code for the engine and launch applications from it. But again, that only makes sense for large companies or advanced users, not for regular developers or people just getting started. It doesn't make sense to pay close to $2,000 per year per user in order to get those features. Unity for everyone in this room should be free and I recommend using the personal plan. Last thing to mention is that for large gaming studios like Activision, Bethesda, Ubisoft, and more, they will typically build their own engine rather than using an out-of-the-box engine like Unity or like Unreal. The reason for this is because these companies have been around long before engines like Unity or like Unreal have existed. And when these companies first started, it was standard practice to build your own engine from the ground up. And these companies have been using their own engines for over a decade now. Another reason why large gaming studios will typically build their own engines is because they're better able to differentiate their applications and optimize them by doing so. We'll have a quiz question going over this later, so make sure you remember that large gaming companies typically will build their own engines from the ground up rather than using an existing engine like Unity or like Unreal. Now things are changing as Unity and Unreal become more and more popular. But especially in the case of Unity, their bread and butter market is for those small teams and independent developers, which makes it a great engine for what we use it for. All right, cool. So hopefully everyone's on the same page. Emojis, guys, comments in the chat. How's everybody feeling? Awesome. All right, so let's talk about some of the games that were made using the Unity engine. So I'm sure you guys recognize some of the games here. Super Hot VR, Pokemon Go, Rick and Morty, Rickality, Rust. These were all very popular games made using the Unity engine. I'm sure you guys also know Fall Guys, another very popular title made using Unity. But one of the best illustrations as to the benefits of using the Unity engine is in the game Beat Saber. Now I'm sure you guys have heard of Beat Saber, it's the best selling VR game of all time, and it was made using the Unity engine. Now Beat Saber started off with a small team of one user producer and two developers, and they were able to scale and build their application and launch quickly by using the Unity game engine. They didn't need a big team or tons and tons of funding. 
they were able to build their application quickly, get it to market and grow through their sales. Even at their time of acquisition to Facebook, they only had eight people on their development team. So Unity allows you to build your applications quickly and keep your team lean in order to maximize your customer impact and minimize your expenses. So that is a big reason why we like Unity and a big reason why a lot of small teams really like using the Unity engine. All right, so let's talk about some of the non-gaming applications to Unity and there are a lot of them. So Altspace VR is one of the apps made with the Unity engine. That's the application we're using right now and that you see around you. VR Chat, Ocean Rift, Tilt Brush, Hololabs Champions, these titles span different industries, so don't think that Unity is only useful for gaming. It's useful for any type of industry, from education, to medicine, to architecture, to engineering. There's a lot of different applications you can make with using the Unity engine. As applications become more three-dimensional, Unity is going to become more popular and the standard way for app development. Let's talk about the growth of the VR market. This chart shows the growth of monthly connected headsets on Steam. For those who don't know Steam, it's the largest digital distribution platform for PC gaming, holding around 75% of the entire market space. Now this chart does not represent all VR users, as it doesn't count standalone headset users on the Oculus Go, Quest 1, and Quest 2, as well as users that use the native app stores like the Oculus Store. But since Steam is very popular for PC VR, it gives us a good indication as to the growth of VR as a whole. As you can see, the growth started accelerating in May of 2019, which is when the Oculus Quest 1 was released, and the monthly connected headsets on Steam grew by over 800,000 in the next year. Then in October of 2020, the Oculus Quest 2 was released, and in just six months, the monthly connected headsets on Steam grew by over a million. The Oculus Quest 2 was a huge step to making VR mainstream. Compared to the Oculus Quest 1, the Oculus Quest 2 featured a processor twice as fast, 50% better resolution, 15% lighter design, and $100 cheaper than the Oculus Quest 1. In March, Facebook's head of VR slash AR, Andrew Bosworth, said that the Quest 2 not only outsold its predecessor in the Oculus Quest 1, but outsold all of its predecessor headsets combined. That means in six months, the Oculus Quest 2 sold more than the Oculus Quest 1, which has been out for over 18 months, the Oculus Go, which has been on the market for over two years, and the Oculus Rift, which has been out for three years, added all together. In quarter four of 2020 alone, it is estimated that the Oculus Quest 2 sold over 1.4 million units and will account for 87% of all VR headset sales in 2021. The VR market is growing rapidly, with large companies like Facebook, Microsoft, Sony, and now Apple investing heavily in the industry. Facebook, which owns Oculus, is the leader in the field, with now an estimated one-fifth of all their employees working on AR slash VR. Microsoft, which owns the app we're in right now, Allspace VR, has recently announced their new product, Microsoft Mesh, which is a mixed reality collaboration platform that will work anywhere on any device. They also have recently secured a $22 billion contract with the US military using their mixed reality HoloLens headset. Sony has announced they're going to be releasing a successor to the PSVR for the PS5. The PSVR 1 was a wildly successful headset that sold over 6 million units. The PSVR 2 will have 4K resolution, inside-out tracking, and Sony's built-in haptic feedback controllers. Even Apple, a company new to the space, is expected to release their own 8K VR headset in 2022. VR is prime for growth as the space is maturing and major companies are hedging their bets. If we look at the growth and demand for VR developers, we can see it accelerating with demand surging 1,400% according to Hired, and salaries ranging from 135,000 to 150,000 in large tech hubs in the US. This is due in demand not only from the consumer markets, but also from the enterprise markets as VR training becomes more and more important. According to a PwC report done last year, over 23 million jobs worldwide will be using AR VR by 2030 for training, work meetings, and customer service. Learning VR development with Unity will help you enter this quickly growing field 
and get employment working with the computing device of the future. Going over where our students work, we've had students graduate from our courses and go on to get jobs as a product manager for virtual experiences at Walgreens, a project manager at Bad VR, to developing experiences for the Burning Man VR Festival. Through our classes and team projects, you'll form relationships with your peers that will help you both academically and professionally. We've had people from all backgrounds take our courses from head of technical innovation at Amazon's Audible, software engineers at IBM and HP, to learning architects at Harvard. We see relationship forming just as important as the academic side to getting employed in XR. All right. So I know that's probably still playing for some of you. Probably still playing for some of you, especially those who came a little bit late. Uh, but we got to move on just because we are a little bit short on time. Uh, can you guys give me emojis if you guys are hearing me okay? Emojis, guys. Awesome. So I like to see. Uh, live stream people, could you give me some emojis too in the live chat with a bunch of uh, questions from the live chat people? Awesome. Okay, sweet. So if you did come in late and say you didn't miss the end of that, this session is being fully recorded. So if you want to take a look at the recording, we're going to be sending it out to everybody. But in order to do that, we need to have a way of reaching out to you. So if you want the recording from today, make sure to press the sign up here button. We'll send the recording through an email afterwards. Uh, if you're on the live stream, sign up using the link in the video description or on the live chat as well. Uh, Tony, our other instructor, is going to post a link there. As I mentioned to the people that were here at the beginning, uh, we're going to be raffling away our Introduction to Unity and Future Programming course at the end of today's lesson to one person who has signed up and entered their email. We're going to be randomly selecting one entry give away the course at the end of today's session. You have to stay till the end of the session in order to claim it, uh, but you can enter it by pressing the sign up here button or clicking on the link in the live chat for you live stream user, uh, viewers. Um, everyone's gonna get entrance into the Google Classroom for the class, so you'll be able to get the learning materials, assignments, uh, be able to attend our first uh, meetup for the class, which is actually this Saturday at 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Uh, Coursera is a bunch of other resources, but make sure you do that now. I'll give everyone a second to do that. And then we'll go into a brief Q&A. Uh, and then we'll go into some 3D assessment based on what we uh, learned today. So everyone, make sure to press the sign up here button at the top. Put your information down to enter the raffle and also get the recording in Google Classroom. Or if you're in the live stream, click on the link in the description uh, or on the live chat. Uh, and then we'll go into Q&A after. All right, give everyone a second to do that. Nice. Awesome. And while people are doing that, uh, we had a few questions on the live stream. Let's see, I'll just answer them while we're doing that. Um, yeah, thank you, Demented Beast, uh, for for uh, giving me some kind words. That's nice, thank you. Um, so someone asked, how do I know the classes are legit? Um, so on our website, again, you'll be able to get access to it, but we have reviews, so reviews from past students. Uh, so you can take a look at what uh, people's experiences going through the courses were. Also at our first class this Saturday at 4 p.m. Eastern, we're actually gonna be having two alumni from our program, Justin Chow from uh, Bad VR, who's a project manager there now, and also Adam Farouk, who's the PM for virtual experiences at Walgreens. They're going to be coming in and giving a talk on navigating XR job opportunities and how they were able to go from our program, graduate, and then land jobs in XR. So you'll be able to ask them questions uh, that you have and see what their perspective was as students. Um, so that's a great opportunity. And again, we're going to be having that free class uh, this Saturday, 4 p.m. Eastern. In order to get access to it, all you need to do is press sign up here, and we're going to be distributing the live stream link and also the uh, alt space link uh, so you guys can attend. So just make sure to do that and you can ask some questions, you know, the past students, um, check out their views on our website. Um, and yeah, I mean, we're, 
uh, yeah, I mean, you, you, we have to see it in order to believe it, and that's why we have that first week of our course free, so you can kind of test run it. Uh, it's a free trial before you uh, commit to it. Um, but yeah, we have our students go on to do awesome things. Um, for some of you that might know uh, the Oculus Launchpad program, uh, which is basically where Oculus uh, picks the best up-and-coming developers across North America and then takes them into a free three-day full boot camp for VR development and then three months of support. Um, our students on our first run of getting our students apply to it represented 10% of all Oculus Launchpad recipients, which I, in my knowledge is the most out of any program. So um, we're really happy for our students for doing that. Um, and they are at the end of the program, which should be coming up in the next two months or so, they'll get a chance to pitch to Oculus uh, for a five to 50,000 grant uh, to continue their VR app development and then publish it onto the store. So um, yeah, best way I'd say check out their views. Uh, we're gonna be having some students come to talk to you guys on Saturday. Uh, so you'll get to ask them questions as well. Um, and yeah, you could also see student projects on our website. Yeah, okay. I think I've answered that one uh, quite thoroughly. Um, what else is there? Uh, there's a lot, well, we have a lot of questions in the live stream now. All right, if everyone's done that, has everyone signed up? I'm gonna go and take some questions from the Altspace audience. So make sure you sign up. Um, let's go ahead. I'm gonna dismiss all hand raises, re-raise your hand by pressing the bottom right raise hand button, and I'll be able to call on you. So if you have a question and you're in alt space, press the bottom right raise hand button and I'll be able to call on you. All right. Let's go to let's go to Gus. Uh, could you tell tell us more about the Oculus program? Okay, yeah. So, yeah, is, so just talk about the Oculus Launchpad program. So, it's a free program. Anyone can apply. Um, so, you don't need any sort of uh, budget. You don't need any sort of, um, you know, connection or anything. It's a free, open program to apply for. Um, and Oculus puts on this, this program to help young developers in their careers. Applications usually open up in the fall. So, they just close the cycle this uh, fall. They're going to be having another one fall next year, which we're going to be preparing our students for. Um, it does help them a portfolio. They're going to ask you about your previous experience. Uh, they're going to ask you about why you want to uh, build in VR and what you're looking to build. Um, so yeah, you can apply regardless of whether you go through our program or not. But we provide the uh, experience and also help you build your portfolio for your application for that uh, and also provide you with a network of students. A lot of our students have gone on to team up uh, with other university students in that program. Um, so there's a lot of also really key uh, networking aspects to our courses. Just like, you know, regular school, university, we're trying to be the school for the metaverse, which I, I'm sure you guys have heard that term um, quite a bit recently. Um, yeah, and we've been teaching in VR for over two years, one of the only institutions to do that. So um, it's an exciting field. Yeah, and I hope you guys have enjoyed so far the beginning of what it's like to learn in virtual reality. Uh, Kyle? Hello there. I was one. I was wondering what the di different. Sorry, uh, one second. Oh, good. So, what's, the, bleh. what's the difference between uh, DirectX and uh, um, Unity? Do you do you have any sort of response to that one? Got you. So let me just double check. But I, I'm assuming DirectX is another type of engine. Uh, let me see. DirectX. Oh, program interface, multimedia, especially game program, video on Microsoft platforms. Okay, so it looks like DirectX. I haven't used DirectX as a programming language. Um, maybe it's for certain types of Microsoft programs. Uh, but Unity, it's, its bread and butter market is for 3D applications. Uh, so especially if you're building in VR and AR, Unity is the engine that you want to go for. I talked a bit about it in the presentation. But Unity, 90% of augmented reality apps are made with Unity. 60% of all VR apps are made using Unity. Uh, Facebook, you know, if you've heard the John Carmack talk at Oculus Connect, Facebook is actually using Unity for uh, its apps. So, you know, uh, Facebook Horizon, or, you know, however they're branding it now, uh, Horizon Worlds, Horizon Workrooms. It, uh, Facebook is actually using Unity Engine to build their own apps, which is actually really interesting. 
Um, and the John Carmack talk uh, was really cool because he was basically talking about how people are going to be able to build their own content for the metaverse. And he was describing potentially using basically like a Unity plugin. People would be able to make their creations in Unity and then upload it to the metaverse using a plugin uh, that Facebook would integrate with Unity. So um, it's really cool to see Facebook, you know, using Unity so strongly and kind of endorsing it in that sense. And then uh, potentially planning on using it for kind of the main tool for metaverse creation. Uh, content creation from creators like you guys. So, um, I, I mean, I'm biased, obviously. Unity is the most popular game engine out there, um, with 45% of all games being made with Unity. There's other engines. Unreal is the other uh, large competitor to Unity. Um, there's a lot of smaller engines like Godot. Um, DirectX is, seems like uh, for specific applications, Microsoft applications uh, could be a good uh, programming language to use. But um, yeah, Unity for us, you know, due to its popularity, due to its support for X for uh, XR with their uh, SDKs, um, is the preferred choice for us. I mean, you know, if you want to build content for this platform, Allspace VR or VR Chat, Unity is the only option. Um, so it, it's seeming more and more like the industry standard. Of course, Unreal is a great engine also, um, but they have their unique disadvantages and advantages. Uh, I know. Okay, we are way beyond time, so we're gonna go ahead and jump into, and you guys can. I, I, after when we have a breakout session, you can come up and ask me any questions. We could talk more in depth about stuff. I'm happy to do that. Uh, but we're going to jump into the Q&A for today. So the way it's going to work is you guys are going to see a question here, and then you just vote A or B based on what you think the answer is. Uh, live stream people, I'm going to drop a link in the chat. It's also in the video description uh, if you refresh the page to the quiz. Um, and then you guys are going to vote there, live stream people. So make sure to open it in a new tab, all right? This link I'm sharing with you guys, open it in a new tab. All right, looks like some people are already doing that. Um, so live stream people, make sure to vote. Uh, click on the link in a new tab, right click on it. And then all space people, just click on A or B based on what you think the answer is. You can only vote once, okay? So just click on it, A or B, it will register. Uh, you'll see it by you have the tally going up on the top over there. Uh, so once you vote, can't change your answer, so make sure that you're confident in the answer choice you choose. All right, so the question is, why would you want to use an asset from a third-party developer? Why would you want to use an asset from a third-party developer? Okay, live stream people, make sure to vote. Awesome. All right. Okay, let's go ahead and reveal the answer in three, two, one. 95%, nice job guys, to save you time slash money so you don't have to build that asset yourself. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and play an animation that's gonna explain that answer. So everybody look on stage. The animation's gonna play on stage. When it does start playing, give me some emojis. Um, if you came in a little bit late, maybe it takes about five seconds to load, but most of you should be instant. Uh, and when it starts playing, yeah, just throw up some emojis and we'll go ahead and take a look at it. Uh, let me. And the live stream for uh, the questions for the live stream people in three, two, one. So the question asks, why would you want to use an asset from a third party developer? And the answer is to save you time slash money. So you don't have to build that asset yourself. Building a game or building an app is an incredibly complex process. There's so much that goes into it from building the 3D models, to programming the interactions, to designing the UI, to doing the sound design. It's impossible to do as one person. You most likely have one to maybe two skill sets in either programming, 3D modeling, sound engineering, but you're not going to be talented in doing all of those yourself. And that's where assets come in, as you can use assets like sounds, like 3D models, instead of having to build them yourself and then focus on what you're good at, like the programming. So assets save you time and money. The only issue is that since these assets are from third-party developers, there's no guarantee whether it's going to be up to date with your Unity version or it's going to be of a high quality. So use reviews and use the description of the asset before you download it. All right, emojis of that played for you. Awesome. All right, let's go to the next question then. So what do you get in the Unity Plus versus the Unity Personal account? 
And next question for live stream users as well. So go ahead and vote live stream people. Again, open the link in a new tab um, so you don't exit out of the live stream. And go ahead and vote. What do you get in Unity Plus versus Unity Personal Account? And all space people just click on A, B, or C based on what you think the answer is. We're going to go over the answer no matter what, so don't worry, with the 3D animation. Okay. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and reveal in three, two, one. 84%, the answer is better data analytics on your app, nice. All right. All right, everybody look on stage. We're gonna go ahead and play the animation. Give me emojis when it starts playing for you. All right, three, two, one. So the question asks, what do you get in Unity Plus versus the Unity personal account? And the answer is better data analytics. Now, there are a few other things that come with Unity Plus account, such as splash screen customization and 25 gigabytes of cloud storage, but the splash screen is more of a minor feature. And for the cloud storage, we use GitHub, which is a free cloud storage tool for your Unity projects. So that's not really a big plus. So we recommend to all our students get the personal plan because it's free and there's no difference in the graphics pipeline, the particle effects, the animation tools. The actual engine you get is the same for the Unity personal plan and the Unity Plus plan. Only when your application starts to have a significant user base and those additional features like better data analytics will warrant paying the extra $400 per user per year for the Plus plan. All right, you should be seeing some money symbols around you. Give me some emojis if you do. All right, awesome. Okay, so let's go to the next question then. So do large game studios use engines like Unity or Unreal, or do they make their own engines? Live stream people, and make sure to vote. I went to the next question. Yeah, yeah, have it open in a new tab so you don't exit out of the live stream. All right, I'm going to go ahead and reveal in three, two, one. 75%, the answer is make their own. All right, everyone look on stage again. We're going to go over it. Uh, with the animation, and again, give me emojis when it starts playing. Let's go ahead and reveal in three, two, one. So the question asks, do large gaming studios use engines like Unity or Unreal, or do they build their own engines? And the answer is they build their own engines. The reason is not really cost related. Unity does not take a royalty from its developers for using their engine. They do charge subscription fees per developer, but for a large studio, it isn't really a huge expense. The main reasons large studios make their own engines is because one, simplified engines. If you have a specific need for the type of games you wanna create, say like a shooter or RPG game, you want to have an engine that only has functions that are specifically tailored to that. Also, building it yourself, you'll have a greater understanding of the middleware and logic that the engine uses, which will also make debugging easier to do. The second reason is uniqueness. You want your engine to be highly optimized and have a unique feel to the applications it produces. You, you want to be able to differentiate your game visually and better optimize it by building your own engine. You'll usually be able to better differentiate your game visually and be able to better optimize it by building your own engine. Finally, repeat use. A lot of studios have been around far before Unity became popular and have already made engines that they've been using for years now. Also, some studios might want to build their own engine and eventually license it to other developers who have the same needs as them. This can be seen with what Epic Games did with their Unreal Engine. All right, give me some emojis when that finishes, guys. Awesome, let's go ahead and take a look at the next question. So which of the following is not a reason you would use Unity? Keyword here is not. So what is not a reason you would use Unity? 
again, just go ahead and answer A, B, C, or D. All right. Okay, let's go ahead and reveal in three, two, one. Seventy percent. It is completely open source and free to modify. That is not true. So we're gonna go ahead and explain why that is in a second. So let me end the question for live stream people. Uh, some live stream people. Yeah, they did. Nice. About seventy percent too. So let's go and take a look at the stage. Again, emojis when it starts playing, guys. And I'll see you guys in a little bit. So the question asks, which of the following is not a reason you would want to use Unity? And the answer is, Unity is not open source. Open source software is where the source code is released under a license in which the copyright holder grants the users to use, study, change, and distribute the software to anyone and for any purpose. Now with Unity, although you can actually see the source code of the engine, you cannot modify it and distribute it as you please. Now if you want to be able to see the code, be able to modify it, and then release an application from that modified version, you're going to have to sign up for Unity's Pro Plan, which is $1,800 per year per seat, so basically per individual working on your team. So Unity not being an open source engine is one main disadvantage of using Unity versus building your own game engine. Though Unity has been around for over 15 years and has been used by millions of developers. So it's very rare you're going to have a need to modify the engine. As if you ever run into any issues, you're very likely to find a solution to that issue on a discussion forum like Stack Overflow. All right, give me emojis when that finishes for you guys. Awesome. All right, let's go. Which of the following is false about Unity versus Unreal? So next question, guys. This is the last one. So which of the following is false about Unity versus Unreal? The live stream people make sure to vote too. All right, let's go ahead and reveal in three, two, one. 76%, Unity has better graphics than Unreal. Yep, and let's go ahead and reveal for the live stream people. All right, now we're going to take a look at the animation. Again, emojis when it starts playing for you guys, and we'll take a look in three, two, one. So the question asks, which of the following is false about Unity versus Unreal? And the answer is Unity has better graphics than Unreal. It's actually the exact opposite. Unreal is generally regarded to have better graphics and a better rendering pipeline than the Unity game engine. And this makes Unreal a popular choice for those working in the fields of architecture or engineering. Unreal also has the high quality and popular Blueprints visual scripting system, which makes it easy for those who don't have previous programming experience to create applications using the Unreal Engine. And it is regarded as a higher quality visual programming system than the Unity equivalent called Bolt. So for us, we see the benefits of Unity outweighing the benefits of Unreal. And the reasons for that is one, Unity has a much larger asset store than Unreal. 
Unity is also a far more popular game engine than Unreal, which means Unity has more robust discussion forums, which will help you troubleshoot when you inevitably get stuck. It also is the only option if you want to develop content for social VR apps like Allspace VR or VRChat. And finally, it is the far more popular option for VR or AR app development. All right, can I get some emojis when that finishes? Awesome. All right, so just a quick uh, little um, poll over here. Let's do a quick little poll. Just where did you find out about today's event? Live stream people, make sure to vote too. All right. Where did you find out about today's event? Just want to see where everyone's coming from. Awesome. Okay, I'm reveal in three, two, one. Okay, bit of a distribution there. Nice. Awesome. Okay, so, and then we'll see for the live stream people. Good, awesome. Okay, so, we're going to go ahead and go on to the next portion of today, uh, which is going to be talking about next steps. Um, now, before I do that, I do think I have a bit time for a few questions. Not too many, though, because uh, we are running pretty low on time. Um, and while we do that, this is going to be the last opportunity to enter the raffle for today. So after this next portion, after we talk about next steps, we're going to be revealing the raffle winner who's going to get the introduction to Unity and c -sharp programming course for free. So if you want to enter the raffle, now is your last chance to do that. You can do that by pressing the sign up here button or if you're in alt space or if you're on the live stream, clicking on the link in the video description or in the live chat that Tony is going to post, our instructor there. Last chance in order to do that, in order to be able to receive the raffle prize, we're going to reveal that after this next portion. Uh, you have to be present in order to claim the raffle prize. Okay, So if you leave and we call your name, you're not going to be able to claim it. You have to be here in order to be able to receive it. So last chance, guys, make sure to press the sign up here button. You're also going to get the recording from today and entrance into the Google Classroom, which, as I talked about, is going to have all our course material, uh, and you'll also be able to attend our first class this Saturday at 4 p.m. Eastern for free. So make sure to do that now. Um, this is going to be the last chance to do that. All right, I'll give everyone a second. Okay. All right. And while everyone's putting in their information, uh, let's take a few questions from the audience. So live stream people, if you have a question, uh, or if you're on the, if you're in all space, press the raise hand button. So while everyone's putting their information in, I'll take a question from the audience. Let's go to media. Media carry. Hey, uh, so my question was, what is the coursework like, like throughout the program? Hmm. So in terms of just time commitment or also like in terms of what you're going to be doing? In terms doing? of mass majority time commitment. Got you. Okay. So, uh, yeah. So what we say the time commitment is a six to eight hour per week time commitment for each of the courses. Um, now for the first course, which is introduction to Unity and C-sharp programming, if you have previous programming experience, it's going to be more along the lines of six hours per week. And if you don't have previous programming experience, it's going to be more along the lines of eight hours per week. All right. And that's because you're not, you know, even if you know programming, you come from your software developer, you're still going to get a lot of value from the course. Uh, you, we're teaching you the Unity engine on how to do animation, particle effects, UI, sound design. We're also teaching you the Unity 3 programming library. And obviously, we're teaching you C-sharp programming. If you don't have a previous experience, which again is what we assume, we don't assume any previous experience at all. As long as you're 18 years or older, you can take this course. Um, and it's going to be more along the lines of eight hours per week. Live stream people, do you have any questions? Uh, how long does the course last? How many hours per week you expect it? Okay. Um, the courses are either nine week or 10 week in length. So we have four courses. The first course is 10 weeks. The second course is also 10 weeks. And the third course is nine weeks. Those courses, I think, is also 10 weeks. Yeah. Uh, what was the free program you mentioned earlier? So Unity is a free engine. Anyone can use it um, with using the personal plan. Uh, you can enter a Google Classroom for free, and our first week of the course is free. Uh, so you're going to be able to attend our first meetup, which is this Saturday, 
where we're going to talk about uh, the principles of object-oriented programming, uh, teach you how to do 3D vector math, and then also have two alumni uh, who are working at Bad VR and Walgreens at for VR uh, talk about how to navigate XR job opportunities. So that's free as well. Um, okay, uh, other questions? Has everyone signed up? Has everyone put their information in? Again, it's the last call to be able to do that. All right. Is everyone good? Emojis? Everyone's ready to move on? I know we have other questions, but uh, we're going to have a breakout session after, so I'll be able to just talk to you guys and answer any questions there. Um, but we are low on time. So we're going to jump into the next part of today. It's going to talk about next steps. We're going to have my little hologram guy come back up here. Uh, so you should see him in the bottom left. Again, if you have been here for a bit, it's going to take about three to five seconds where you're going to have that little freeze frame thing like you had at the beginning. Uh, so don't exit the app. Don't try and re-enter. Just let it load. If you are came in a little bit late, maybe in the last five minutes, um, it might take about 20 seconds to load. Uh, but yeah, give me emojis when it does, and we're going to talk about next steps, and I'll see you guys in a little bit. Hello, everyone. I'm back in my real-life form. If you're able to hear and see me, if you could throw some emojis if you're in alt space or comment if you're on a live stream, that would be much appreciated. That way I know you're able to hear and see me okay. I'm going to give everyone a little bit to do that. Okay, awesome. Now, if you're interested in taking next steps to building your own VR app, as I mentioned before, we offer a pipeline of four courses taking you from a complete beginner to building your own VR app. I'll go through how we teach VR development in VR for those that are interested in joining us. Now, all of our courses run as follows. One, we meet once a week live in VR to teach and assess you on what you've learned and built. During the week, you have videos you need to watch and assignments you need to do. And then during our weekend live classes, we go through what you learned and test you. Two, all of our sessions you can attend either live in VR or on your computer through Altspace VR or through our YouTube live stream. So you don't need a VR headset in order to attend our live meetups. All of our live classes are fully recorded and distributed to you in case you missed a class or want to review anything we went over. Three, during our live classes, we go through our self-produced database of over 80 3D experiences, which demonstrate and explain the 3D concepts you're learning. It makes sense to learn three-dimensional concepts, which is what Unity presents, in three dimensions. Four, we have two instructor-led open office hours each week to help you with any questions you have or any troubles you're having with your coursework. Five, you have access to our class Discord where you can get immediate help at almost any hour of the day as long as us instructors are not asleep. Contrary to what our students think, we actually do have a bedtime. Six, you have the option to get weekly one-on-one -on -one hour-long mentorship and support sessions from one of our instructors or experts. You can use this time to get help with your personal project or your course assignments. Seven, in total you can expect about six to eight hours of work per week. This course is meant to be a part-time commitment that you can succeed in while working a job or going to school. Eight, all of our courses are project-based. You are building a new Unity project every week that teaches you specific Unity concepts that you can then add to your portfolio of work. Nine, when you complete each of our courses, you get a certificate from us, Universe, and our courses also prepare you for the Unity User Programmer Certificate to get an industry-recognized certification. 10. And lastly, but very importantly, we offer a unique policy where if you enroll in one of our courses once, it is free for you to take as many times as you like forever. So if you fall behind and can't complete the run you're currently in, or even if you just want to go back and review, you can take any future run of the course completely free, no questions asked. That is something that we offer that we haven't seen offered at other live programs. On that same note, all of our class material, including class recordings, assignments, our class discord, and more, will forever be available to you. Because of how our courses are set up, we've seen a six times better graduation rate than traditional online courses, and you can see why from our student responses. 87% of students said our course was significantly better or better than an online course. 85% of students said it was much easier or easier to stay motivated, and 90% of students said our 3D experiences were very helpful or helpful to their learning. Whenever you enroll in any of our courses, you get access to our universe community. You get access to our free universe workshops, 
where we've gone over blender modeling, how to make photospheres and 3D hemispheres, alumni interviews, and more. You also get access to our universe socials, where we explore VR apps and games together. As I mentioned before, relationship building is one of our best value propositions. Because of this, we put a lot of effort into connecting you with your peers to make friendships and professional connections. That relationship building is all made easier due to the fact that we hold our events and socials in Altspace VR, which unlike traditional video chat services like Zoom, allows you to interact like you would in real life in a 3D immersive environment. Now I'm going to briefly go through our pipeline of courses. The first course in that pipeline is our Introduction to Unity and C Sharp programming course. That course assumes no previous programming or Unity experience and all levels are welcome. We've had complete beginners take that course and graduate as well as heads of technical innovation at Amazon's Audible or software engineers at IBM. All have found tremendous value because this course not only teaches C-sharp programming, but also the Unity engine and the Unity 3D programming library. This is a 10 week live course starting November 6th and meeting once a week on Saturdays from 4 to 5.30 p.m. Eastern. So it's at this exact time we're meeting at right now for this workshop. One of the best parts about this course is that it's only $199 for the entire course, which is 10 times less expensive than what you'll find through other live VR development course providers. I'll talk about a price breakdown and also give out a discount for the course after I briefly go over the other courses in our pipeline. The way our pipeline works is once you finish one course, around two weeks after you graduate, you'll start the next one. So after you graduate the Introduction to Unity and C-Sharp Programming course, you'll start the next course, VR World and Advanced Unity Development, two weeks later. Once you graduate from that course, two weeks later you'll move on to VR App Development, and so on and so forth. In the VR World and Advanced Unity Development course, you build your first VR world like the one you see around you today. You also learn Unity Lighting, Animation, using third-party asset stores, Blender Decimation, and how to use Git and GitHub for your Unity projects. That is a nine-week live course that meets Sundays from 2 to 3.30 p.m. Eastern and is $249 for the entire course. The next course is VR App Development, where you build and improve your VR app each week with a team of two to three fellow students. That is a 10-week live course that meets Sundays from 4 to 5.30 p.m. Eastern and is $249 for the entire course as well. Lastly, we have our VR App Interactions and Publishing course. Here you learn how to program VR continuous movement, grab interactions, make photogrammetry models, and publish your team's VR app to the Oculus App Lab store. That is a nine-week live course that meets Sundays from 4 to 5.30 p.m. Eastern and is $299 for the entire course. Now, all of our courses on average cost $249, but if you look at the value you're getting, it's at least 10 times that. Here you can see our courses have a market value of $3,000 each and a full breakdown of what you're getting. Now, you might ask, where am I getting these values from? Well, if you try and find an equivalent live VR development course using something like Zoom for meetings, the price will range between four to $12,000. We are charging $249, which is between 10 to 40 times less expensive. The reason we're charging way below market value is because our business model is not to have a few students with a lot of disposable income take our courses. Our business model is to drastically lower the cost so that we can have a lot of more students who have a strong interest in becoming a VR developer. Now we also offer one-on-one -on -one mentoring packages to supplement our courses as well. This is for those students who want an individual expert guidance from one of our instructors to help them with their personal project or coursework. These occur during hour-long private meetings at a time during the week that works for you. So our base Introduction to Unity course is $199 total with all the features I mentioned before. Our second package is the course with five hours of one-on-one -on -one mentoring with an instructor and that costs $499. Our third package is the course with 10 hours of one-on-one -on -one meetings with an instructor and that costs $699, which saves you $100. As a reward for staying to the end of today's session, you can use the code info session to get 25% off all packages, which can save you up to $175. Please write this code down or take note of it so that you can use it whenever you like. The first week for all our courses are free to attend, and this lets you get a better understanding of what it's like to learn in VR before committing. We will be sending out an email to you with the information and links to attend our first meetup for free on Saturday, November 6th at 4 p.m. Eastern. If you registered for today's event through Facebook, 
you're already all set to get that email. For those who didn't register through Facebook, please go to our website at tryuniverse.com, go to the courses tab, then click sign up for the introduction to Unity and C-Sharp programming course to get access to our first live class free. Lastly, I want to show you all a short video going through the student projects we've seen throughout our courses so you can get a better sense of what you're going to be building with us. After that, we'll portal to a student-made VR world to take questions from you all and hang out. I'm going to jump into my VR avatar now, but I hope you've enjoyed experiencing the future of online learning and can join us learning in virtual reality.
All right. Hopefully that finished for everybody. If not, again, we're going to have the recording distributed afterwards, so don't worry. All right. Can everyone give me some emojis? You guys are hearing me okay? Were you guys able to see the um the video and the whole holoportation thing there? Cool. Um, Awesome. Okay. So what we're going to have now, uh, we're going to reveal the raffle winner for one. All right. So we're going to do that now. And then we're going to drop a portal and portal, uh, excuse me, to one of our student-made VR worlds. You'll be able to ask us questions. I'll kind of talk about the world building process with some examples um, as well. Um, so I think we're good to hop into that. I want to say a few important things, regardless of whether you win the raffle or not, everyone's invited to attend the first week of our introduction to Unity and teach our programming course completely free. It's a free trial. And our first class is this Saturday at 4 p.m. Eastern. Okay, so we're going to have it in VR. Uh, you can also attend through live stream if you prefer. We're going to send out the invitation to everybody here that signed up with that sign up here button. Uh, everyone's going to get an invite, be able to attend for free, and then see if the course is right for them. Also, entrance to Google Classroom with all our course material, syllabus, etc. cetera. Um, so be on the lookout for that. Hopefully, you could join us 4 p.m. Eastern. I already talked about we have a lot of cool stuff, object-oriented programming, 3D vector math, navigating extra job opportunities. So we got a lot of fun stuff planned. I hope you guys can make that. Everyone's invited. All right. Um, now let's see, are we ready to reveal the raffle winner? All right. So the way the raffle works is if I call your name, you have to be present in order to claim the prize, right? So we're raffling off the introduction to unity to see our programming course. Uh, if you win, if you're in all space, you have to come down to your bottom left of the stage here. So I could see your name. If you win on the live stream, you have to drop a comment saying that you're here uh, just so we see that you're present, all right? So in order to claim the prize, you have to be here. If you're not here, then we're going to go to the next person, okay? So we'll have a backup. All right, everybody clear on that? I got some emojis. Emojis, guys. Everybody clear on how the raffle works? Awesome. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and reveal the winner, and then we're going to portal off, okay? All right. I get an emoji drawn. Drum roll, please. Awesome. All right, live stream emoji drum roll. And the winner of the raffle for the introduction to Unity and C Sharp programming is Jorge Melos. Is Jorge Melos here? Again, if you're here in all space, you have to come down to the bottom left in order to claim the raffle winning, or you have to comment in the live stream. Again, if you're not here, we're going to go to the next person. Is Jorge here? Jorge, again, come down to the bottom left if you're here. Now we're going to go to the next person. Jorge, or if you're on the live stream, drop a comment in the live stream. Oh, that's Quantum Inspiration. Okay, <laughs> Quantum Inspiration. <laughs> okay, okay, awesome. Okay, Eddie spelled the name right. All right, just wanted to make sure that it was actually him. Okay, awesome. Can we get some emojis for Jorge? Jorge's on the live stream right now. Emojis, guys. Congratulations, Jorge. Awesome. All right, but everyone's going to get access to the Google Classroom and be able to attend that first class free. Um, already talked, we have really cool stuff going on. I've programming and then two alumni from um, our project manager at Bad VR, which is Justin Chow, and our product manager of virtual experiences at Walgreens, which is Adam Farouk, are going to be coming and sharing their experience going from our courses and then getting jobs in XR, how to navigate interviews, how to build their portfolio. Um, how to um, network, so a lot of fun stuff there. So everyone's invited. Be on the lookout. An email should be coming at 11 p.m. Eastern, which is about 30 minutes from now, with an invitation. But it's not over yet. We're going to go ahead and portal off into a VR world. Uh, so live some people, you're coming with us regardless. All right, so let me go ahead and drop a portal for everybody. One sec. All right. Here we go. So the way the portal works is you're going to click on this little blue orb thing. And you should have a line coming from your avatar to the blue orb, right? So make sure you have a line. Only the first 30 people will be able to enter. So make sure you click on that fast. Once you see a blue line from your avatar to the blue orb, do not click on it again. That will basically undo that line. So once you see the blue line, don't click on it again. If you're not seeing the line and you keep clicking on it, try moving to a different spot. 
completely different spot in the room and click on it again. Right? It's usually just an issue where you're positioned in the place in the, in the world. So um, make sure that blue line's coming from your avatar. If you're not seeing it, move to a different spot in the world so that you're able to click again, uh, preferably with less people. So try and get to an empty space that's still relatively close. All right, so if you see the blue line, I'm gonna send everyone friend requests. So in case you're not able to join us, um, you'll be able to, I'll send you a message for you to join. All right, so I'm sending everyone friend requests. If you don't see the blue line, uh, accept my request so I can give you a message to teleport. All right, is that everybody? I think so. Okay. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and drop in there. Um, and everyone's getting the invite. Make sure to check on your emails and go ahead and jump into our VR world. All right. Nice, that's what's up. Yeah, I went to yesterday. All right, everybody. I'm going to be outside. Um, and you guys can come over here and ask any questions or just explore for a little bit. I'm by the grill. All right. All right, so the way questions are going to work, if you just press the raise hand button, I'll be able to get to you. Uh, if you're in the live stream, Go ahead and drop your questions in the live chat. I'll be able to see and answer them there. All right. Okay, so anyone have questions? Press the raise hand button if you do have a question. Let's go to uh, Kin. Yes, uh, I had a question. Um, uh, as far as like blockchain technology, do you see Alt Space VR integrating that anytime? So I definitely see metaverse platforms like Alt Space and hopefully Alt Space in the future integrating um blockchain technology and cryptocurrency, especially for uh, transactional transactions. Um, you know, in in the metaverse, transactions and e-commerce are going to be very critical to monetization for creators. So especially with things like cryptocurrency becoming so popular, that seems like it's working hand in hand with metaverse platforms. Uh, Allspace doesn't do it, VRChat doesn't do it, but there's a lot of uh, metaverse platforms that are combining their 3D immersive environments with a blockchain and cryptocurrency uh, backbone, blockchain for the distribution and cryptocurrency for the transactions. Um, so Allspace hasn't done it yet. Uh, but I think that there's going to be a close relationship between the rise of these metaverse platforms and the way they do commerce uh, with cryptocurrency to make sure that transactions are uh, being able to be held uh, individually, not in some sort of centralized uh, fashion, which Facebook obviously would like. Um, other questions? Yeah, all space not at the moment, yeah. Uh, other questions? If you have a question, press the raise hand button. If you're on the live stream, drop a question there. If not, I can kind of talk about the world building process. Oh yeah, okay. So just to clarify, so someone asked about this. So someone asked, so to clarify, is it $250 per course? So 1K for the whole series? Uh, not exactly. So if you buy all the courses at once, so you buy all the four courses at once, you get $500 off. So it's 50% off. All right, so if you, I'll drop the code. And you guys can write it down too. Um, if you decide to buy all the courses at once uh, and you use the discount code pipeline, you get five hundred dollars off all the all the courses, which is fifty percent off everything. So um, you should write that in the chat. Um, Tony, if you could uh, write that in the chat just to kind of put my what I said into writing for the live stream people. Um, that'd be great. Yeah. So um, so yeah, it's four courses. Each course is nine weeks, nine to ten weeks long, live taught live in VR. 
um, intro to Unity and C-Sharp programming, then VR world building, then VR app development, then VR, pub VR app publishing. Uh, each course is on average $250. This one's $199. Uh, one, the other two are $249. The last one's $299. Um, but if you buy them all at once, then it's $500 off. So the entire four courses are $500 for everything. If you use the code pipeline. So that's P-I-P-E-L-I-N-E. -E. Buy them all at once. Uh, yeah. Um, cool. Other questions? If not, I can talk about the world building process here. Uh, other questions from the live stream? Any questions from live stream people? All right. Are we good on the live stream? All space. Good. Okay. So let's talk a little bit about the world building process. So the world you're seeing around you was made by our past student Artsy. Now, some of you who are in the all space community might know who Artsy is. You can kind of identify her worlds by having this signature she puts up. Uh, about a world, so this one's Artsy Original. You'll see it around the world she creates in alt space. And she's a professional world builder, so she did this as a career. Uh, she has over 100 clients right now that use her templates for all sorts of things, from art galleries to work meetings um, to events and concerts. Um, so she is a professional world builder now. She's speaking. At, she spoke at conferences uh, like the WebXR conference two weeks ago, um, and yeah, so. This is one of her worlds. Um, she came from our courses. She had no experience beforehand. So she didn't have any Unity experience, okay. didn't have any Blender experience, she didn't have any program experience. And she was able to learn those skills in our courses and then obviously build a bit on them to build some pretty awesome worlds like the one you see around around you today uh, and make this a career. So um, yeah, we're really proud of Artsy. Uh, Nero is another one that came from our courses that is doing crazy stuff. She was working on the Burning Man a VR festival here, a bunch of alumni. We have VR level designer at Supernatural, which just got acquired by Meta. Um, I already told you guys about Adam and Justin. Um, people starting their own VR companies uh, like Peer Tracks. So, um, yeah. Uh, to talk about this place here, and then the Oculus Launchpad recipients, right? Um, talk about this place here. I'll answer your questions on the live stream in a sec. Um, this place was built using blender so basically when you're building your vr world there's two ways you can go about getting the 3d models because the 3d models are really going to be essential to the kind of scenes and worlds you build the, the 3d models are things like your umbrella your table your seats your couches your infrastructure so the way you get those 3d models there's two ways is by getting them either through an asset store or by building those 3d models yourself using a 3d modeling software like blender right Oh, where's my live stream guy? Okay, I just want to make sure I'm visible to the camera. So we generally recommend starting off by using 3D models from asset stores, just because it's easier to do, especially when you're getting started, and it's very quick and efficient. So we teach you how to get assets from uh, the asset stores, such as the Unity Asset Store, which is native to the Unity engine, has over 40 million assets, the largest asset store, um, and also third-party asset stores like Sketchfab. Uh, Sketchfab is also a very populated asset store, which contains both free and paid assets and has a Unity plugin, which makes it really easy to import FBX, OBJs, and different types of uh, files and models into your project and automatically apply their textures and materials. You don't have to deal with any of that hassle. Um, so that's one way, and that's what we teach you first. The other way is with a 3D modeling software where you're basically building the models from the ground up. And that's what RC did. So every, play, every model you see here, RC built from the ground up using Blender. Right, so everything is self-built. Now that does take a lot more time and skill to master and use because it's a whole different software in itself. We teach Blender, uh, we teach Blender a bit in the second course where we teach you basically how to get uh, assets from Unity into Blender, decimate them, which is basically lowering their poly count to make them more performant, and then bringing them back into Unity. So we go over that in the second course. We also have a live workshop series we did that was free to all universe students uh, where we went through and taught you how to build uh, Blender models. Uh, and we have recordings of those Blender workshops that are available to all universe students as well. And we're also working on a full length Blender course uh, to teach people that are interested in learning how to build their own 3D models. So that's gonna be coming up as well. Um, what else? Blender is free to use. So Blender is a 3D modeling software. Now Blender does have a game engine uh, in itself, it's not nearly as powerful or popular as Unity, but it does have one. Just like Unity has its own 
um, asset creation and 3D modeling software or ProBuilder, but it's not nearly as popular or as powerful as Blender. So that's why generally uh, developers will use Unity for the interaction, the UI, the sound design, the any type of programming aspect to their project, and then use Blender to create their 3D models and import that into their Unity project. Um, so, oh, um, I see someone dropped the portal. Um, so yeah, that is how Blender and Unity relate. Um, any questions about that, guys? Questions? Uh, okay, sweet. I want to see some live stream people. Let's see. Other people join that. All right, let's go to Gus. Gus, Gus. Do things that are part of those. Can you tell me the uh, well, Gus... two questions? Yes, can you tell me two questions? One is the uh, promotion codes. Can you tell, is it uppercase, lowercase? I remember one of them was info dash session. Oh, and what was yeah. the other uh -huh. one? So, and yeah, the second question lower... is, oh, go ahead. Sorry. Oh, go ahead. Oh, Sorry. Go ahead. Uh, I'll, I'll remember the second question. I forgot it already. Okay. Um, so the do discount codes info session, I N F O and then dash S E S S I O N. That is for 25% off any course or mentorship package. Um, is it case sensitive? That's one. No, not case sensitive. Uh, none of the discount codes are going to be case sensitive, so that, that you're good there. And the other one is pipeline, P I P E L I N E. And that is for 50% off all, um, if you buy all the courses at once, you get 50% off all the courses. So it saves you about $500. Oh, I, I remembered my other question. Huh? Uh, I noticed that some worlds are about 100 megabytes, and this one was a lot less than 100 megabytes. What primarily is the reason why some worlds are a lot bigger than, than smaller ones? Yeah, so we go over that in the course and uh, with our optimization section. So there's a lot that goes into world size. Um, and generally, you want to shoot for the smallest world possible because that's going to lower the load time that people take to get into your world. Um, so generally, for especially for Quest 2, uh, which is a mobile VR headset, which has a lot more less powerful uh, computing power than, say, like a PC VR headset, we usually recommend aiming for less than 100 megabytes. 50 megabytes is amazing, um, but under 100 megabytes is generally what is recommended. Um, so... The things that go into that is the type of assets you use. So are you using assets with a high poly count, uh, which is basically the amount of triangles that it takes to uh, shape the object in the mesh. Um, so that's one thing. What type of shaders and particle effects you're using can have an effect on that. Um, now, there's other things that can have an effect, like FPS or frame rate. Um, so that could be uh, what type of lighting are you using? Are you using baked lighting or are you using real-time lighting? Uh, but we go over that and how to do those things like lower your poly count or do light baking in the second course, your world in advanced unit development. Thank um, you. No problem. Great questions. Uh, let's see. Any other questions from all space? Let's go to live stream. Um, okay, cool. Uh, if, you paid for, if you paid for the beginner course starting November 6th, we'll receive an email or course material. Okay, so Keith, hey Keith, how's it going? Um, so Keith, you should have been invited to the Google Classroom. I think you might be in it. What basically happens is that after the first week, since the first week is a free trial, after the first week, we're gonna only keep people that are enrolled and submitted payment in the Google Classroom. We're gonna remove everybody else. And then we're gonna release all 10 weeks of the content and material, right? So Keith, if you're in the Google Classroom, you're good to go, make sure to attend Saturday. Then uh, after the first week of the course, which is that free trial, then we'll release all the material for the course. So we already have the first two weeks released. So if you wanted to kind of get a head start, you can. Um, but we're going to be officially releasing everything after that first week free trial. Um, okay, cool. Looks like Tony had that question. Are the world building primitives you uh, like the original Second Life? Uh, okay, so the world building primitives used in VR world seem like the original Second Life primitives. Can you use high resolution textures and sculptures in Unity? Yeah, for sure. I mean, Unity, you can use any type of uh, assets. You know, they have um, different platforms to deploy to from high end platforms. If you're targeting like PC gaming uh, or high end consoles like PlayStation 5. Um, so you can, any platform really Unity supports. We went over that. Um, it just depends on where you want to deploy to. If you're deploying to mobile, 
or mobile VR, you want to make sure you use very you know, lower resolution textures, uh, low poly counts for your assets to make sure they're performant on those headsets. You're not seeing uh, low frame rates. Uh, you're not seeing a lot of um, crashing for your users. So those are things you don't want to see. So it really depends on what you're deploying to, and that's going to kind of dictate the hardware and computing power you have access to. Um, do they compound, or is it one discount code only? Uh, oh, yeah. So you can't stack discount codes. So you can't go 50% off with a primitive discount code and then 25% off with the info session code. So it's 75% off the world. Now that, yeah, that would, uh, would take an even larger loss on that, which is not going to be sustainable. So yeah, only one discount code uh, can be applied. Um, other questions from live stream people? Great questions, live stream people. Um, yeah, Second Life's another metaverse platform. It's kind of the first one. Um, there's a lot of metaverse platforms that are coming up. VR Chat's another big one that just has a billion dollar valuation. Rec Room had a billion dollar valuation just recently based around the funding. Um, you know, Fortnite, Roblox has a $50 billion IPO. Um, Meta or quote unquote Facebook is releasing or is releasing out of beta soon their Horizons app, uh, which is going to be their metaverse platform, it looks like. So there's a race right now that's happening for the metaverse, and it, it kind of is, is really heating up now. As you guys probably know, uh, Facebook just changed their name to Meta to kind of re to, to uh, reflect that um, change in direction. They're they're taking huge bets on the metaverse concept. I mean, they're kind of shifting their entire company priority to being that, um, and they're estimating to take a $10 billion uh, investment in, in VR every single year, which is, I think, going to be like four times their expenditure for Instagram. Um, so they're putting a lot of money into it and kind of leading the field. Um, and then you have other companies now, uh, like Apple, which people are, are uh, thinking is going to be Facebook's main competitor with their VR headset releasing at the end of 2022. Um, and then you have Microsoft with their HoloLens headsets, uh, Sony with their PlayStation headsets, PlayStation uh, 2 VR2 headsets going to be released soon. Um, Valve, obviously, with their uh, headsets as well, HTC with their headsets, but Facebook is by far and wide leading the race and is um, has accelerated the adoption of VR to a tremendous amount. Um, just to give you some numbers for perspective, I think I already said this, but the Oculus Quest 2 outsold in its first six months all previous headsets combined. And it's estimated the Oculus Quest 2 in its first year sold 4 million units. Um, and just to put that into context, the PlayStation 4 in its first year sold 8 million units um, and the Xbox One sold 5 million units in its first uh, year. So VR is coming to the stage where it's going to become mainstream, at least at the console level, and eventually they're projecting it to replace uh, and compete with mobile devices. So just like everyone has a smartphone or everyone has a laptop, uh, people are going to be having a VR device, and that's Facebook's pitch for the future. They're going to be using it as the primary, a primary computing device other than uh, like a secondary or tertiary device, which is what a console can be uh, seen as today. So... Um, it's very, it's, it's, I would say a right time right now to get into this. You're seeing an exponential curve in the growth of VR adoption uh, from the Quest 2. And now, you know, most of the sales you're going to see for devices are not going to be in its first year. It's going to be in years two, three, four, and five. So Quest 2 had a great first year of sales. And those sales are going to continue to increase two, three, four, and five as they go into the next phase of sales, which is content creation. Now you're going to see large titles come to Quest 2. Um, you know, what, what just released right now is like Silent Hill, uh, which is Resident Evil, just released. Now they're creating these titles and content that's going to draw people to the platform and have them continue to engage. And then you're having work applications like uh, Horizon Workrooms come out. Microsoft just announced they're going to have a Teams VR integration as well, which is probably going to be very big. Um, and then also uh, Facebook is going to be having, or Meta, is going to be having their workrooms platform integrate with Zoom, so you could attend any Zoom meeting in VR. Um, so it's a really happening time. You know, I'm sure you guys might have even just heard about the metaverse for the first time um, because of the huge deal Facebook's making about it. Um, a lot of companies are putting big bets into the metaverse, and Unity is going to be the tool to build content for the metaverse. It's kind of like the shovel, you know, when the gold rush came, shovel for, for picking your gold, uh, from this new metaverse concept. I mean, Facebook themselves is even using the Unity engine for their own applications. And 
I mentioned that Carmack talk. He, he talked about how Unity, they're thinking about how they're going to have creators push content to the metaverse. He suggested the idea of having a plugin for Unity that's going to allow people to publish content to the metaverse, which would be fantastic. And it's how metaverse platforms like VRChat and Allspace work today. So Unity is growing tremendously. Um, VR and AR are growing tremendously. Um, so it's a great time to, to get at this stage uh, when it's starting to see some exponential growth. Because uh, these could be the jobs of the future, and they probably will be. 20%, I think, of Meta's or Facebook's workforce is VR and AR right now. Um, and yeah, more companies are going to be investing more and more into it. Uh, any other questions? Let's see, questions. Oh, Gus, do you have a question again? Yeah. Uh, how future? How future proof is is uh is all the the education you're far, far offering? Because uh, as you mentioned, that uh, Meta is coming out with a new platform. Um, headsets are going on the are being miniaturized. They're being new headsets are supposedly going to be lighter, smaller. Um, and that's going to affect the way that um. Where all the information is going to be com computed and displayed. Um, so, how how future proof is the stuff that you're teaching for that, for what's coming down the pipeline in a year or two? Yeah. So, I mean, that, yeah, that's the beauty of Unity is that you're building again in an engine, which is the, the software, and then it's going to handle the deployment to all these different platforms. So, when the hardware when the hardware increases, you know, when Quest Two or Quest Three maybe comes about. Um, new VR headsets become more powerful. The process is going to be you know, a little bit different. They might have new functionality uh, for to take advantage of this new hardware, but the centralized uh, engine is going to stay the same. You know, Unity has been evolving. For Unity started, I think, 2005 when they first started picking up Steam. Then the iPhone came out. They kind of became the dominant player for iPhone apps, and then since then, it's been uh, growing tremendously. But that was you know 15 years ago. So just like mobile apps um, evolved and had better hardware, um, you know, internet con connectivity be increased, so you were able to, to run more intensive applications. Um, same is going to happen with VR. Uh, so Unity is going to evolve just like it did for mobile apps, it's gonna evolve for VR apps, and Unity updates. Usually, they have an official long-term support uh, version every single year. Uh, so 2020.3 is looking like what it's going to be for this year. Last year, it was 2019.4. Uh, they probably might release a 0.4 version this year too. Uh, the year before is 2018.4. So I, you know, I've been I've been since the 2018.4 version for which is what I use for Allspace and VR Chat. And yes, there's updates every year. You know, you get some new functionality, maybe some new SDKs, but the core engine is the same. Um, they'll make slight revisions and add some features, but you know, the actual core engine that knowledge is going to transfer every single time. Um, it's like another any other software you use. You know, like give maybe a popular example like you know instagram facebook you know they they have updates um they have new features you know the stories they have reels now for a lot of these things yeah they they have new features but the core functionality is the same and that knowledge will still transfer um so yeah um unity again is kind of like the shovel for bit for building um it's a tool you use to build your applications and its adoption is growing um and so it looks like it's going to be the engine to dominate for the next coming years. Um, I mean, yeah. Uh, for the Oculus Quest 2, what is the significance of GB size, gigabyte size? Does it refer to the hard drive si Is there reference to the hard drive size on your computer? Um, yeah, so gigabytes, uh, which is what GB stands for, is basically the storage of the Quest 2. So the Quest 2 right now is at 128 gigabytes and 256 gigabytes. Excuse me. 128 gigabytes sells for 299. Uh, 256 gigabytes sells for um, 399. And that basically is the storage, which is what you're going to be able to store your games and apps on. Um, so 128, I think, is fine. We only see larger applications come, like we're seeing, um, you know, Resident Evil. Um, those ones might come about and might require larger space. But right now, I think 128 is fine. Um, if the question is too bad, feel free to ignore it. What are your thoughts on Facebook now, Meta, trying to centralize themselves? Ah, that's a great question. Um, so, yeah, so Facebook is, what I'll say is Facebook, yeah, Facebook is completely destroyed, like, it's, it's close to monopolizing market, sadly. PlayStation VR, 
you know, is, is, is a very popular headset. Um, and hopefully we'll take market share there. Valve has their own headsets. Live has their own headsets. Um, but Facebook has really dominated the market. Um, it'd be terrible if I, I don't think they're uh, trying to uh, centralize as metaverse platform by themselves. They've been saying that they want to get other uh, other creators and other uh, companies involved to have their own applications and kind of think of it as the internet where each company has their own site. But it's overall connected uh, through just like websites are connected in the internet. Um, so they want to hopefully do the same thing for the metaverse. Um, obviously, you have to watch how this progresses because Facebook, you know, is a large tech company. Um, they have some issues in the past with privacy. So we have to monitor it. But overall, um, in, in my opinion, Facebook has pushed the VR field much faster than it would have if uh, Facebook was involved. If you look at how Facebook is investing in the field. It's not economical. I'm sure they're taking a loss on every headset they sell. And if you look at how competitors are trying to compete with those with those headsets, it's un infeasible because uh, no one can offer those losses at that scale that Facebook is doing. So that's another sad thing is that it's a large tech company kind of um, out muscling the market by pure uh, scale and uh, scales of economy. But it you know it, it is happening and it, it's been. It, it does move the field forward because now we're able to have these low cost devices that everyone can have access to, um, everyone can create with, uh, everyone can see the metaverse themselves. Um, so there's good and bads to that. Uh, and you just something you have to monitor, to make sure that they're being equitable uh, and fair in the platform of the future. I mean, mo most people are seeing this as the transition from mobile internet, which is kind of the dominant way that people communicate today on their phones, to the um, metaverse, the immersive internet. Um, so just like we had a transition from the 90s and early 2000s to the mobile internet, um, people are, are projecting that that same transition is going to happen from mobile internet to the metaverse, where everyone's going to be able to have digital representation of themselves in the next stage of the internet. So um, something you have to monitor. I mean, just like the internet, um, people have to monitor the control that uh, companies and regulation has over how information flows and how people communicate. Um, that's why there's standardizations for the internet. That's why there's government regulation. Same thing's gonna happen happen for the metaverse. Um, WebXR will have adoption now. Yeah, definitely. I mean, WebXR, Facebook has told us now in the Connect that they are going to be releasing. Oh, one second, I just got a message. Um, oh yeah, Facebook told us they're gonna be releasing web versions of popular apps for the Quest. So Instagram, Facebook, WhatsApp, Slack, those are all gonna have WebXR versions uh, for the um for VR. And just like in, again, mobile internet, you can kind of see this transition, you know, when the iPhone came out and mobile internet blew up, same might follow with what's happening with the Quest and VR. Initially, when the iPhone 1 came out, the internet, the regular internet, wasn't optimized for mobile. It was very chunky. The hardware wasn't optimized for it. Sites didn't want to optimize their website for mobile when it wasn't that popular. Then as adoption grew, then the uh, websites started optimizing for mobile viewing. And the same is probably going to happen for websites optimizing for WebXR viewing. So, yeah, just like you can view different sites on your computer, on your mobile headset, I mean, on your mobile phone, on your iPad, VR is just going to be another platform for that. Um, enrolled in the first course. Oh, hey, Julie. Uh, what should I do if I want to use the 50% off to buy all four courses? Okay. Hmm. Okay, I'm going to send you a message. Um, let me just make sure I have your information. Let's see if we can get something uh, sorted out. What I think that's Juliet. Let me just double check. Um, yeah, Juliet. Okay, I'll send you an email after, um, and we'll get that settled. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, yeah, we've been here for two hours. Uh, <laughs> any other questions, guys? Questions? I think I'm gonna head off. Although I love talking about this stuff, um, we'll be able to talk more. Uh, any other questions? Good questions before it, we call it for today. Yeah, I, um, these are the questions I think about all the time, so I'm happy to discuss them. Um, yeah, metaverse is very uh, happening time right now. Um, very good time to get in and learn the skills. Yeah, there we go. Okay, um, skills to create your own creations in metaverse and kind of be on the next platform for the future. Um, yeah, I hope to see you guys. Everyone's going to see the invite this Saturday, 4 p.m. Eastern. It's our first class. It's free. First week is a free trial. Everyone's invited. 
if you just came in here and just kind of been listening and you don't know what I'm talking about, go to tryuniverse.com, go into Google Classroom, you'll get access there. Um, but yeah, info, use code info session, 25% off, I-N-F-O dash S-E-S-S-I-O-N. And then be ready Saturday, 4 p.m. Eastern in all space or live stream. All right, guys, I'm going to take off, accept an email, join the Google Classroom. Can I get some emojis? Thank you guys for staying. Some of you have probably been here for two hours now, so I thank you for that. Um, and hope to see you guys Saturday. I'll drop a portal. You can check out one more student-made world. This one's use, made, using photogrammetry, um, which is basically, we go over this as another really cool technique where you basically take a bunch of real-world photos of an object, feed it using like your iPhone like smart, uh, smartphone camera, feed it into a uh, software like 3DF Zephyr, and then it procedurally generates 3D models um, that are hyper-realistic. So we're going to take a look at an example here one of our students made. Um, and you'll be able to see 360 uh, photospheres of different locations, um, and then also the 2D pictures and also the photogrammetry model. We go over how to do that with just your regular smartphone camera or you build your own models in our third course. Uh, make sure to click on this little blue orb, guys, if you want to come with. So it's a really cool technique. Um, and again, with something we teach. Uh, is everyone in? All right. I'll see you guys Saturday. Make sure to accept that invite and the Google Calendar invite and uh, safe travels in the metaverse.